Dear friends and colleagues, it's my great pleasure to welcome here Professor Alex Taekwang Lee. Uh, let me briefly introduce him. Uh, Professor Lee is an uh, expert in cultural studies and he is the founding director of the Center for Technology and Humanities at Kyung Hee University in South Korea. In uh, Korean, he published 19 books and besides that, uh, he edited uh, two volumes in English, namely The Idea of Communism in 2016 and Deleuze, Gattari and the Schizo Analysis of Postmedia, which appeared quite recently, I assume. Uh, let me also mention that um, Alex uh, translated uh, one of uh, the books written by uh, Václav Havel, or former president. So uh, maybe uh, if uh, there will be chance, uh, uh, he will translate uh, uh, some uh, book of our next president. <laughs> <laughs> so we will see. The possibility is open. And uh, today, uh, Alex uh, will be talking about um, Deleuze's unwritten Marx. Please, stage is yours. Thank you. Uh, I'm really uh, happy to uh, deliver this lecture. This is the first time, actually, you know, that, um, uh, we'll do uh, this kind of topic. Gonna be a part of my uh, forthcoming book, Red to Lose. Is a uh, you know, actually, Deleuze wasn't uh, regard, was wasn't regarded regarded as political, you know, philosopher. Of course, he uh, talked about a lot the political philosophy, and then he insisted, you know, the my philosophy mostly a uh, political philosophy. But uh, actually, um, not many uh, people, but I mean, uh, from the perspective of leftist, you know, the. Um, the groups, uh, his philosophy was not really uh, welcomed by those, uh, the, you know, the political actually the, the agenda. So, uh, but uh, I wanna actually give you know the, another perspective to this sort of common, you know, agreement um, about the lose you know, the political philosophy, and then uh, so uh, I actually wanna say the whole actual work uh, plus uh, that Deleuze you know, did uh, through his life uh, was about Marx. And then uh, his hidden ri rival or some friend will be Louis Althusser. You know, that's um, the main point, my main point. All right, so in an interview with Antonio Negri in 1990, Deleuze stated that he remained Marxist. It's not simple, you know, rhetorical uh, assertion, in my opinion. Is very serious because uh, you know Deleuze uh, didn't like you know do some kind of joke about his philosophy. He's very you know precise guy. You know even he, he the, the checked you know his interview word by word. You know he didn't publish anything you know which was not actually the fully checked by himself. He's very precise and then uh, decent guy about his philosophy. He's a quite serious guy. What I mean. So when he said I'm. I remained, you know, Marxist. It's not simple, you know, the rhetorical, um, the, you know, the, the declaration about his philosophy. This uh, provocative declaration places uh, Deleuze in a unique position, distinguished from most French contemporaries, such as Michel Foucault and New Philosophers. Because uh, Michel Foucault and New Philosopher, Glucksmann, and uh, many actually, you know, the uh, uh, post uh, 68 you know the philosopher uh, the you know the you know the support the demarxification okay they actually they, you know abandoned the marxism and then they criticized you know uh, leftist in you know, the politics you know even michel foucault actually very you know the clarified his own you know the very actually you know, the demarxified you know tendency after the 1968 when to lose a completed interview with the Antonio Negri, the genesis of Marxism has ended. That means actually that the red years of uh, France, you know, ended in those days. And it's a privileged position in Europe. That means a Marxist you know, position in Europe was no longer maintained. The political disillusionment of the anti-capitalist uh, theory, demarxification, is a very Jameson term, culminated with the collapse of Berlin Wall. 
Blues did not alter his attitude in another interview with uh, Didier Elbon in 1993. It's after the end of you know, the Soviet bloc, he had another active interview. He didn't change his you know, the, the declaration in this interview. In the autobiographical dialogue, he explained why he felt thoroughly Marxist today and confessed endorsement of his long-held plan to write his last book entitled Granger Marx, The Greatness of Marx. The legendary book title, you know, actually recently uh, released, you know, on uh, internet, uh, some blogger, you know, in America actually, you know, the, discussed this thing. Uh, the Antonio Negri actually uh, uh, clarified, actually, he uh, saw uh, Drew's you know, text about Marx. Actually, though, he uh, mentioned, you know, this text. So uh, uh, there were a uh, very uh, interesting uh, discussion whether, you know, the, the Deleuze, you know, the book about uh, Marx really exists or not. Just like, uh, you know, Borges novel, <laughs> the Aristotle's, you know, the theory of comedy really exists or not. <laughs> Just a very interesting, uh, you know, discussion went on on the internet for a while. So, uh, the philosopher confirmed that his philosophical project uh, about Marx was in, uh, inextricable from Marxism when the failure of Soviet communism was evident. This is uh, enigmatic, you know, actually the, the truth. Why I lose, you know, that he actually insists I remain Marxist, you know, when the Marxism ended, you know, officially. Deleuze's emphasis on linking his philosophy to Marxism is not an anachronic regret or apology for his political stance. Because he was not actually regarded as a militant, you know, during uh, actually the, the upheaval of that kind of uh, uh, French communism, all right? Uh, he, w he didn't, uh, you know, the get into French Communist Party, never been, you know, party members. And he didn't embark that kind of Maoism at all because he actually he belonged to Sorbonne, all right? According to uh, you know French history, uh, the mostly uh, Angs is uh, Ecole de Normale is uh, occupied uh, actually by the Maoists, while uh, Sorbonne was occupied by Trotskyite. Trotskyism was very you know dominant in Sorbonne. So actually Deleuze actually studied in Sorbonne. Okay, he didn't like Sorbonne, but anyway, just <laughs> he uh, belonged to them. That's why so you can understand the Deleuze himself you know the distances you know distance himself from uh, Dekai Maoism. So in the philosophy, uh, in the you know 1990s, Marxism was still the banner of a struggle against the so-called neoliberal globalization beyond Europe and U.S. The rise of global capitalism was not consequence of a failed Marxism, but instead the realization of what Marx clarified and anticipated coherently through his works. In particular, actually, the Capital Volume Three. You know, he didn't finish that one, but you can see that he finished that actually that the. the the, the you know the volume three of course angers you know the edited after the you know death of Marx. But you can find out he uh, developed you know his you know discussion about the financial capitalism you know globalization of capitalism, but he didn't finish it. So uh, from this perspective, I would say that to lose unfinished project about Marx must be estimated as another answer to anti-Marxist reactionism from different perspective. There are several layers of uh, conjecture about Marx unwritten, uh, Del Deleuze unwritten Marx. For instance, Eric Aliès called it virtual Marx in the form of an empty square by invoking a philosophical, philosophically clean-shaven Marx that Deleuze described in practice of difference repetition. Furthermore, Eugene Holland labeled a Deleuze approach to Marx as a minor Marxism, which is transformation of orthodox or dialectical Marxism. Alongside this, Nicola Thoban regarded the Marx concept of communism as the foreground of Deleuze politics. He argued that, a quote, Marx remains the preeminent thinker of the impossibility of any easy or given political escape from the infernal capitalist machine, with the simultaneously posting uh, such a possibility and potential on relation formed within and particular to capitalism itself, unquote. And to lose resonance with Marx is related to the question of, question of politics immanent to capitalist relations. Isabella Garo also admitted that to lose interest in Marx is constant despite the momentary 
eclipse of his reference in his works. He didn't actually very overtly uh, quoted Marx, you know, through his works. But if you are interested in actually, you know, the relation between uh, Deleuze and Marx, you can find out lots of, uh, you know, the uh, mentioned quotation. You know, even he actually he, he uh, simply, you know, the copied, you know, the Marxist rhetoric uh, for his uh, book. So, um, uh, okay, just as uh, Zhang Jack uh, Leclerc, uh, uh, Le Circle, uh, pointed out, Marx provided Deleuze, quote, a framework for thought, unquote, even when Mark, uh, Deleuze hardly mentioned his name. That means actually that Deleuze uh, you know, did not really actually mention Marx, but uh, you, know, you could uh, see uh, this sort of uh, analogical you know, rhetoric in Deleuze's books. Put in whatever virtual or minor, Deleuze Marx does not end up with revisionism or post-Marxism. I think Bolivar brought to the fore some important points that explain the link between Deleuze and Marxism. In an interview with uh, Charles Bartold, he actually indicated that, quote, the combination of philosophical concepts <coughs> of Deleuze with the central Marxist tradition, almost orthodox plays fundamental role in his work with Gattari, unquote. And so what is happening with Deleuze and which was already present in the previous generation is the confrontation with the philosophical concept of Marx, Nietzsche and Freud. Here, Balibar pointed out again, Deleuze's contribution to the revival of Marxism by proposing, quote, a theory which provides a huge space for the discussion and transformation of Marx after the 1980s, unquote. In this manner, Deleuze emphasizes that, quote, in the history of philosophy, a commentary should act as a veritable double and bear the maximal modification appropriate to a double, unquote. Therefore, philosophically, clean-shaven Marx or philosophically, Beard Marx, uh, Beard Hegel is not a copy of Marx or Hegel, but their repetition. The account of any philosopher is the reproduction of philosophy. The Deleuze focused on the double in any commentary and the modification is significant here. He suggested that essence of philosophy is its reproducibility, or repetition, the production of double. How is the philosophical duplicate possible then? It is, the, it is through repetition by an event. If he writes about Marx, it means that he will repeat condition of Marx critique by that event, communism. In different repetition, Deleuze already argued that, quote, Marx theory of historical repetition, as it appears notably in the, in light, uh, the, the 18th premier of Louis Brunpart, turns on the following principle which does not seem to have been sufficiently understood by historians. Historical repetition is a neither a matter of analogy nor a concept produced by reflection of historians, but above all, condition of historical action itself." Unquote. History must uh, repeat. Otherwise, you know, history is simple, you know, actually the image of the past, you know. I'm going to explain why uh, the Deleuze argue like this. This argument, you know, Deleuze argument, that history does not belong to historians' interpretation, reminds us of the debate between Ricoeur and Althusser in 1955 about historical objectivity. In the exchange, Althusser criticized Ricoeur, who privileged the role of historian, hermeneutic subjectivism in understanding history. That is what Ricoeur argued. Historians' decision would, you know, change the history. And drawing on this viewpoint of anti-subjectivism, more interestingly, Deleuze reads Marx's statement about twice occurrence of significant events. The first as tragedy, the second as a farce. That is what you know, Marx said, the quoting uh, Hegel. Deleuze's emphasis on historical repetition clarifies his positing concerning the problem of objectivity. It is well known that Marx's account of a double-layered historicity is commentary on Hegel's remark remark on the historical repetition or what has happened as a ratification. Endorsing Agni Bergson to appropriate Marx's theatrical trope uh, rather than Hegel, Deleuze uh, regards history as dramatization. But according to his interpretation of Marx, comic repetition is a replacement of a tragic metamorphosis and the production of something new. 
To lose reference to Mark's comment on the historical reference deserves attention because the idea of a theater, the configuration of a space and time, will return coherently through his works. Following Bergson, who compares dramatic art with the world and the consciousness, <coughs> Deleuze grasped the dramatization as the figure of a special temporal dynamism. So this actual theme uh, would uh, repeat in his uh, actual book collaborated with Gattari, Ritunel, you know? It will come back you know, in quite a, a different shape. In the public presentation to discuss the theme of his dissertation in 1967, which will be published as Difference and Repetition in 1969, Deleuze argued that uh, through dramatization, the idea is incarnated or actualized, it differentiates itself, unquote. However, his point was not ab about how the idea is separated from its actualization, but about how it already contains characteristics that correspond with the two, co two aspects of its differentiation. Deleuze emphasized that, quote, the idea is fully differential in itself before even differenti differentiating itself in actual, unquote. Um, this is actually the point is uh, idea, you know, that actually the Deleuze concept idea, uh, actually we must uh, pay attention, you know, actually this concept properly, and then uh, I want to actually you know, develop uh, my understanding of this uh, concept. Um, for Deleuze, the idea as differentiation in itself cannot be represented in any scientific terms, even if science as such comes in its actualization. This is very important Deleuze delusion philosophy about science or some technology and then its political actualization. There is a fundamental gap between a scientific cognition and its actualization. So in this sense, a technology became a sort of actually the means of practice in delusion political philosophy. So this is also the main kind of distinction between Althusser and Deleuze. All right? So he calls this characteristic of the idea as a real virtual, the condition of a many concept, and that he insists that dramatization is the only method to describe its dynamism, dynamic, spatial, temporal determinations. The dynamism of the virtual cannot be reduced to the psychological sense of determination, but quote, the pre-qualitative and pre-extensive taking place in intensive systems where differences are distributed at different depths, whose patients are larval subject and whose function is to actualize ideas." End quote. What actually the Deleuze tried to say by this kind of argument is that, you know, the repetition is not instrumental, it's not a functional, it's not actually you know, the mathematical, you know, but rather qualitative is actually you know, the, um, coming along with the quantitative, but it's not actually you know, the calculated by such a quantitative mathematical algebra. That is what he said. So there is always a qualitative you know, the moment in repetition. So and then I will come back to this argument you know, later. Strikingly, this argument of depth concerning the determining dynamism unveils its resemblance with artists' discussion of the theater. In his essay that dates back to 1962 and was included in the four marks, Althusser discussed Ernst Milan Carlo Bertolacci's play, directed by Giorgio Seller. Um, bringing uh, Bertolacci and Bert Breiter together beyond the mere drama criticism, he explained, that means Althusser explained, how a theatrical method could bring up the true critique of Paul's belief of dialectical recognition by uncovering the dynamism of virtual structure. For him, the uh, Bertolacci and the Bert Breit method of dramatization operate based on, quote, a latent asymmetrical critical structure, unquote, against the illusion of a consciousness that believed itself to be dialectical. Althusser regarded the theater as tool to unveil the dynamism of asymmetrical structure by which everyday life constantly encounters an event. This asymmetrical structure is the foundation of event, where to further, according to Deleuze, is a 
condition of a revolution. It might be undeniable that there is a hidden link between artists and Deleuze in their reading of Marx's concept of theater. As for Deleuze's interpretation, one must be stressed is his remark on the difference between tragedy and farce, which illustrates the production of a new, not the reproduction of the same. You should know that actually tragedy is a history, okay? But the comedy is something else, new one, all right? Why actually the, why does, you know, Deleuze argue like this? So what makes the distinction is repetition, all right? The way in which involution, the opposite of authentic creation, eventuates. Deleuze's concept of involution is inspired by Bergson and develops it in the section of 8000 Plateau titled The Memories of Bergsonia. In the collaborated work with Guthrie, Deleuze and Guthrie clarified that the term we would prefer to use for this form of evolution between heterogeneous term is involution on the condition that involution is in no way confused with regression, unquote. In this sense, becoming is involutionary. Involution is creative. Whereas to regress is to move in the direction of something less differentiative. You know, regression actually, the, some, for instance, origin of nation, something like that. Origin of nation. You would actually make that kind of imaginary origin, you know, and then homogeneous. One origin actually produced the whole, actually, you know, the Czech, you know, the nation or Korean nation, something like that. Actually, you know, but the involution is quite the opposite. You know, you would back, you would actually trace back to the, that origin, but the, there is not such a one single origin. You know, many ideas of uh, Czech, many ideas of Czech nation. You know, and that is involutionary action moment. And then it does not actually happen. You know, by a reasonable actually, you know, the um, reflection, but rather you know event. You know, only event can make this kind of involutionary in the process. So Deleuze and Guthrie appropriated Bergson's concept of relationship between involution and evolution to reject evolutionism's classificatory or genealogical tree, further the belief in teleological and dialectical progressivism. Their concept of becoming as involution is, in this sense, a rhizomatic state of life, you will be as familiar with this concept, which cannot be reduced to the teleological and the mechanistic understanding of life, Deleuze applied this concept to reading Marx's theatrical description of historical repetition. In this way, the involutionary repetition shapes the comic travesty, which replaces tragic metamorphosis. Deleuze, rage, uh, Deleuze raises uh, an in, in, interesting point about third moment of dramatization, something new beyond the comic and tragic, which even eliminates a hero. And you would actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, remind yourself of this uh, joke, is a Zizek joke, you know? You know, the Stalin said, the both are worse. This is kind of uh, the impasse of a dialectic. And Deleuze already actually know, to think about how, can, uh, how we can actually get out of that kind of uh, impasse of a dialectic. And then uh, he actually say like this, the concept of a third, which dominates his discussion of structuralism. And further, the third world appears again here. However, the third stage of repetition is veiled then when the first two dramatic repetitions gain their abstract independence. That means actually the, the tragedy and then pass, you know, is a kind of visual circle, you know, some, sometimes to some point in your imaginary, our past is, uh, you know, tragic. And then uh, today, actually, you can see that, you know, so-called democracy, it looked like a pass, you know, <laughs> but just like that, it's actually dialectical impasse, all right? It's an uh, impasse of li uh, the liberal democracy, something like that. But to lose actually, the, you know, the put forward a uh, third category of this kind of, uh, you know, dialectical impasse. Uh, or some against this kind of dialectical, you know, actually the, the deadlock. So, the logic of Zhang, concealing the depths of real virtuality, is simply perceived as a wholeness of the horse. However, 
Drama has but a single form involving all three repetitions in Deleuze's sense. Taking example of Nietzsche's Zarathustra, Deleuze emphasized that in the different repetition, the most part of the book is about past condition and the present metamorphosis, and then a third moment Quote, the moment of the revelation and affirmation of eternal return, unquote, which implies death of the hero Zarathustra is missing in the story. Zarathustra gonna die, but actually Richard didn't write it. In short, what is absent in the drama of Zarathustra is the future, the death of Zarathustra, death of history and hero. Deleuze claims, quote, Nietzsche gave us only the past condition and the present metamorphosis, but not the unconditioned which was to have resulted as the future." Unquote. What does this mean? Only future give actually the break you know, through of this kind of dialectical deadlock. You know? The future, the time of future. Future is belong to the actual time. And then a uh, future will be uh, the third category of this kind of you know the um, event, all right? So uh, you know actually Nietzsche's works are the preface for his book in the future, not the records of his past thought. This is what actually you know the Deleuze argue. This is very fantastic, you know the fantastic uh, insight, you know. Uh, this approach to Nietzsche is based on Deleuze's concept of repetition. So repetition is not, you know, simple reiteration of this kind of uh, two category, dialectical category, or some uh, not, you know, re reiteration of a contradiction, but rather some sort of bring up, a uh, bringing of this future, you know. And then uh, think about that, you know, what is the present? According to Deleuze, you know, present is a simply reiteration of the past. As far as we actually stay in this kind of past. It, uh, you know, actually, this present is the reiteration of a past. If you want to change this, actually, the present, what sh we should do? Definitely, we should bring up future. Why is that? There is a break. You know, it's not actually subjective, you know, the decision, but, you know, event will come up. And then, uh, of course, yes, to lose, you know, purpose, definitely proved how that you know, future can intervene, you know, what we experience as the present. This is actually, in my, in my, in my opinion, actually the very uh, political uh, sense of, you know, Deleuze, you know, uh, philosophy. According to Deleuze, there are three repetitions which cannot be reconcilable, reconcilable an uh, intra-cyclical uh, repetition, whose first two repetitions repeat one and the same thing, actual event yet to come, a cyclic repetition, which at the end of the third age and at the, at the end of the process of a dissolution, everything recommences with the first age, and finally pure repetition and eternal return in the third state, which is precisely what is needed both to correct the intracyclical hypothesis and to contradict cyclical hypothesis. Furthermore, Deleuze points out that, quote, when Marx also criticized the abstract force movement or medi uh, mediation of the Hegelians, he finds himself drawn to an idea which he indicates rather than develops an essentially theatrical idea to the extent that history is a theater, then repetition along with the tragic and the comic within repetition forms a condition of movement under which the actors or the heroes produce something effectively new in history." Unquote. So actually here uh, Deleuze you know, quite uh, emphasized the uh, non-Hegelian aspect of Marx. Not Marxism, it's a Marx, you know, the critique of uh, Hegel. The theater of repetition resists the theater of representation in that the fundamental opposition between a movement and a concept drive rep representation to its eternal return to the concept. Deleuze takes in the concept of theater of repetition to reject Hegelian concept of mediation and clarifies that, quote, in the theater of repetition, we experience pure forces, dynamic lines in space which act without intermediary upon, upon the spirit 
and link it directly with the uh, nature and history, with the language which speaks people, words, with gestures which develop people, organize bodies, which masks people, places, which are specters and phantoms people, characters, the whole apparatus of repetition as a terrible power, unquote. If there are the specter of marks in Deleuze theater, they would be the primordial mode of marks, not the aftermath effect is character. Why well, is actually you know, primordial condition of Marx? Not surprisingly, Bergson is one of the crucial references for Deleuze's somewhat unorthodox readings of Marx. It is well known that Deleuze played a key role in the revival of the Bergson in the late 1950s and developed his concept of a virtual through Bergson's metaphysics of a worldly intuition. Bergson's philosophical aim was to defend absolute knowledge of the world, time and oneness against uh, uh, rationalization, that means, uh, you know, ratio signature, uh, mathematical uh, rationalization, something like that, ratio something. In Time and the Free Will, Bergson suggests two possible conceptions of time, the one pre from or alloy, the other, you know, uh, so repetitiously bringing, you know, bringing in the idea of space, unquote. He clarified that pure duration is the form which the succession of our conscious states assumes when our ego lets itself live, when it refrains from separating its present state from its former states, unquote. In doing so, Bergson preserved experiments of freedom from mechanistic Causality, a causality, whose theoretical ground is on the idea of a quantitative multiplicity. That means he actually criticized, you know, this sort of uh, um, the technological, actually, you know, the enslavement is like a cybernetic, in my own term. To lose a postulation of repetition resonates with this Bergsonian concept of duration, which he pro uh, proposed proposes the separation of time from space against the Kant's unification of time and space. With his appropriation of a book song, Deleuze attempted to re-evaluate the transcendent, transcendental condition of a Kantian and phenomenological understanding of experience. He argued against uh, empirical approaches to things because such a transcendental way of thinking simply copies a, a priori empirical condition from the given and excludes possible production of the new from its beginning. When he confessed that, quote, I feel like a pure metaphysician, unquote, Deleuze would intend to say that he is not a vulgar materialist, but his pure metaphysics belongs to an almost completely unknown materialist tradition in the history of philosophy in Althusser's sense, unquote. In an interview with uh, uh, John F. Columbell, who asked him whether his critique of uh, Hegel's sim uh, symmetrical dialectics could be applied for Marx? Deleuze uh, pointed out that Althusser's reappropriation of Marx accomplished the liberation of Marx from Hegel and uncovered differential and affirmative mechanism in Marx. He praised Althusser. His statement proves that he attempts to discover a, a much more explosive system and symmetrical holes in uh, this equilibrium under the dialectical opposition in Marxism. In different repetition, Deleuze also praised uh, the Althusser and other authors of Reading Capital, published in 1965. In the book, Deleuze opposes the name of Marx to the peaceful status quo sustained by the idea of social places and functions. For him, Marx indicates political crisis, not social stability. So he actually a little bit very critical of uh, Marxist political economy. So the problems of a society which are determined in the form of abstract labor seem solved by process of actual differentiation. However, Marx is not a solution to the problem. Deleuze states that, quote, as long as the problem throws its shadow over the ensemble of uh, differentiated cases forming the solution, unquote, these problems, quote, will present falsify the image of a problem itself, unquote. The very uh, Bergsonian, you know, the re remodification of a Marxist question. The solution does not mean the end of a problem, but the deceptive concealment of the problem. 
Deleuze relates uh, Marx's concept of patriotism to his interpretation of Bergson. Deleuze's Bergsonian understanding of Marx is the latent outline of his, of his unwritten Marx. So in this sense, I would say the uh, if you ask me the what is the Deleuzean Marxism, I would say Bergsonian Marxism. Endorsing Bergson, Deleuze reconsidered Marx as the thinker of difference, not the hair of Hegel's dialectics. Deleuze's reading of Marx with Bergson does not mean the substitution of Marxism, from, uh, Marxism for Bergsonianism. Uh, he actually juxtaposed Bergson's definition of the truly great problems, the ones which are set forth only when they are solved, which Marx formulation, humanity only set itself problem that it is capable of solving. Anyway, actually the Bergson adopted you know, this Marxist you know, the thesis, all right? When he discussed the you know, issue of a problem, he actually you know, the, also the adopted you know, Marx. You know. The book song raises question of a primordial reality before thinking. One must figure out nothingness before thinking of a being. In this sense, quote, all the figures of nonsense appear in the objective field of a false problems, and history is no less the locus of nonsense and stupidity than it is the process of sense or meaning. Unquote. Only through this channel does the patency of a natural object, social consciousness, or common sense recognize the value. Nevertheless, rectification occurs to the first problem when the faculty of sociability is raised to its transcendent exercise and breaks the unity of a patriotic common sense. The transcendent exercise of faculty of sociability enables us to grasp social problem beyond poverty. Accordingly, Deleuze's adaptation of Bergson's vitalist metaphysic can be regarded as philosophical engagement with the Marxist conjunctures. More importantly, Deleuze calls this transcendent object of faculty of sociability revolution. For actually, the, you know, the Deleuze, the revolution means a transcendent object of faculty of sociability. Transcendent. This revolutionary situation is a certain condition science can be united with philosophy. So for Deleuze, evolution means at the, at the moment you know, when the, you know, science can meet you know, philosophy. So he suggests here an alternative approach to the unification of theory and practice through the renewal of Bergson's vitalism. When Deleuze mentioned that Quote, everything I will return is a vitalistic, unquote. It means that he corrects vitalism, Bergsonian vitalism, by turning it upside down as Marx, Marx does Hegel's idealism. Deleuze clearly insisted that, quote, it is organism that die, not life, unquote. Deleuze defense of worldly metaphysics relies on the mathematical truth of a fundamental indeterminacy between representation and multiplicity. From the outset, Bergson's vitalism finds the, its ground in the philosophy of mathematics and discusses a theory of a numerical multiplicity in his explanation of Jenner's paradox. Bergson's solution to Jenner's question, quote, why does Achilles outstrip tortoise, is that because each of Achilles' steps and each of the tortoise steps are in the, in, 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 indivisible insofar as they are movement and a different magnitude insofar as they are space, so that addition will soon give greater length for the space traversed by Achilles than is uh, obtained by adding together the space traversed by tortoise and then handicap which, which it started." Unquote. In short, Bergson said, qualitatively difference, quality, qualitative difference between tortoise step and Achilles step. That means actually the poor Bergson, that is a confusion, all right? In short, General's mistake is that he does not think of quali uh, qualitative, uh, qualitative uh, difference between Achilles step and tortoise step. By this speculation, Bergson concludes that, quote, it is necessary to admit that the meeting of two moving bodies implies discrepancy between real and imaginary motion, between space in itself and indefinitely um, 
divisible space between concrete time and abstract time. So ideal space time, time and the actual, you know, at concrete time and space, you know, cannot meet each other, you know. Um, for Deleuze, this fundamental difference, the infinite divisibility uh, of a concrete space, infinite divisibility of concrete space, this is a differential, all right, is mathematically, you know. As you know that in Leibniz and the Newton, you know, Newtonian physics, actually we got, you know, that kind of a world, all right, it's a modern world, definitely based on this differential, you know, presupposition. The, we can calculate time according to what? This infinite divisibility of a concrete space. This is the meaning of a differential. And the, he, uh, the Deleuze uh, criticized this sort of uh, uh, mathematical paradigm, which are quite dominant, you know, today. So um, the oneness is this is also very important and a very insightful one. So for Deleuze, this fundamental difference, the infinite visibility of concrete space, is the condition of revolution. This is actually Deleuzean theory of revolution. This modern world, or some you know actually the future also the study this one is a modernity, modern enlightenment, already, you know already implicate this revolution within its own structure. That is what actually the truth said. If we live in this world, revolution is necessary. You know, all kind of a political regime, so-called liberal democracy and the political economy, all these kind of, you know, the system try to suppress this necessity of revolution. That's actually the delusion political philosophy. So, um, the oneness created by continuous, you know, actually nation state, for instance, you know, Thomas Hobbes tried to put, you know, this idea of a commonwealth on the foundation of a science. That is modernity. Foucault actually pointed out, you know, theory of governmentality. That as such is modernity, is a core essence of modernity. So actually this, you know, the actually the governmentality, how actually this government can uh, function? You know, Dulu said is a oneness, imagination of a simple oneness. But for Dulu, this oneness is only intuitively imagined. You know, cannot be proved. Cannot be proved. So this is actually the Dulusian critique of a nation state or a nationalism. Right? So the oneness created by the continuous cannot be represented or calculated, but only intuited. Only we can imagine it. You know, actually the, this argument is quite opposite to Hobbes. Thomas Hobbes said, you know, science would give us the kind of, you know, the, the, uh, the calculation of or representation of oneness. That is a Hobbesian presupposition. Against this one, Deleuze said, we cannot calculate the oneness. You know, we cannot meet all Czech people in your country. And also, I cannot meet all Koreans in my country. You know, we actually experience only person, and not actually the Czech, no actually no Korean. But we actually said, oh wait, there is some Czech, there is some Korean, there is some American. This one is only intuitively imagined. That's what actually, you know, point to actually try to make. So, um, all right. Okay, so, um, that's going on. So in this sense, the continuity of being is nothing but this continuity endlessly repeated becoming. Revolution takes place by the, quote, the social power difference the paradox of society, the particular wrath of the social idea." Unquote. For Deleuze, revolution is affirmative, the way of difference, while fetishism is a negative, the objective field of a false problem. He does not think that critical philosophy could solve the problem lurking in the dialectic of enlightenment. This is actually his different position from Frankfurt School. Such a way of thinking already presupposes the distinction between subject and object and the reflection on the knowledge of things. That actually is, a, you know, the, um, 
his actual position is quite different from critical theory because actually if you criticize something you must uh, have this uh, dichotomy subject and object but uh, Deleuze said you know the subject object cannot solve this problem it's a sort of a reiteration of a visual circle but uh, actually we must uh, presuppose some precondition or pretext for a subject and object why is that there's according to him uh, might be a uh, called you know life all right so um, you know, the critical manner rather, you know, sustains the separation of us from things and their entirety. Revolution is the war of decoding problems by restoring them to their truth, by evaluating that truth beyond representation of consciousness and the forms of the negative, and by acceding at least to the imperatives on which they depend. The idea as embodied multiplicity is the condition of affirmative power of difference. Quote, an idea is n-dimensional continuous defined multiplicity. Unquote. So a revolution is eternal revolution. Or permanent, you know, state of revolution. Dimensions are the condition of a phenomenon. And the continuity is the condition of a relation between changes. A definition is a condition of the mutually determined element which, uh, which the transformation of multiplicity will change. The idea is the consolidation of a virtuality, which cannot be reduced to the representation of a consciousness born out of the actualization. Therefore, what must be con reconsidered in Marx is not to establish the sense of a Marxism, but the virtual of a Marxist polity, that is to say, the idea of communism. In this sense, I want to, you know, link Deleuze to uh, communism. Yeah, Deleuze is always talk about communism, you know. That is a pretext to Marxism. For Deleuze, the communist revolution must create a new social relation in which the dynamism of idea continuously encourages the differentiation of actualization. Actualization settles in three theories of space, time, and consciousness. Space, time, and consciousness. Each spatial uh, temporal dynamism always goes along with the advent of an elementary consciousness. In this sense, class consciousness can be considered as a specific consciousness emerging through practical struggle. However, consciousness is a consciousness of something. Deleuze shaped this phenomenological presupposition to its foundation and sheds light on the repetition of consciousness. Quote, Everything is a consciousness because it possesses a double, even if it is a part of and very foreign." Unquote. In this sense, class consciousness, consciousness is not a reflection of existing workers, <laughs> but rather consciousness of the working class as such, in other words, the creation of the proletariat. I think you would actually you know, put some kind of comparison between Deleuze and Lukács here, right? The history and class consciousness. Lukács also had a very similar idea, you know, the class consciousness must be created, not really actually, you know, the working, the reflection of working class. So in the dialogue with Antonio Negri in 1990, Deleuze clarifies that communism is not the problem of a communication, and quote, the key thing may be to create a backlog of non-communication, that means a void of non-communication, is a, Eric Ali, as you know, said, is a, like a, the empty circle, the circuit breakers, so we can, uh, you know, the elude control, unquote. This is very important, actually. The, the communism means, you know, the, the, you know, escape from control. Communism is an untimely idea, the duration of revolutionary moment, which belongs to the invention of the future, not the continuation of past and the present. Actually, you should actually remind here um, yourself of the actually what the Deleuze talk about. You know the the relationship between uh, tragedy and uh, past. You know in the different repetition, the temporality of an event, pure difference will be actualized again and again in different experiments. Therefore, the pale of revolution is unavoidable in the actualization of real polity. So, revolution is necessary, but necessarily failed. Because that is eternal, permanent revolution. 
The aftermath of a revolution always paves the way towards the subs subtraction of any excessive desire from the actualization of a revolution. As Toulouse says, quote, the revolution failed. All revolutions fail. Everybody knows this. And now people are pretending to rediscover that, unquote. He criticized the new philosopher. The failure of the English revolution, which removed the king but ended up in Cromwell's reign of terror, already anticipates the miscarriage of the Stalinist revolution much before Glucksmann's denouncement of Stalinism. This is also another quite insightful, you know, actual argument about revolution. Paul Deleuze, revolution is nothing else than the production of a new people beyond the nation, the end of nations. What are these new people? In his discussion of Herman Melville's novels, Deleuze elucidates that, quote, America is the potential of a man without the particularities, the original man, unquote. This actual idea is quite opposite to uh, uh, Kozef, all right? Kozef. I, I uh, uh, you know, do, I do not go to the actually, you know, that uh, the Kozef argument about this uh, the topic. He regards the figure of a man of the new world as, quote, the picture of the 19th century proletariat, quote, unquote, whose traits often intermingle with the, quote, the communist man or the society of comrades, the future Soviet, being without property, family, or nation, unquote. I contend that this concept of new people, the production of universal proletariat, who are missing in the regimes of nation state or commonwealth in Hobbesian sense, is the central idea of Deleuze political philosophy. This is my argument. What Toulouse emphasizes here is that the arrival of a proletariat has a, quote, no other determination than that of being man, homo tantum, unquote. The creation of a new people is not determined from without, but from within. Those new people are nothing else than the creators of the third world and new earth, the new communism. In this sense, actually, Toulouse's concept of third world is not simply geographical term but actually more like a you know, revolutionary term to get over the kind of you know, the dialectic of a real polity. It is not a causality of economic, economic determination that produces the people, but rather pure experimental movements of a minor politics, the third realm of becoming minoritarian, escaping the major politics representation that is always already in hiding in the structure, in this sense, Toulouse does not agree with the dialectical approach to politics. Toulouse's critical endorsement of Marx is crucial for his later collaboration with Gattari. Gattari was involved in left-wing organization, whereas Toulouse first came into contact with political movement and activists after 1968. However, this does not mean that Toulouse was disinterested in political activism. He had a different idea about the role of intellectuals. For him, the intellectuals could partake in the revolutionary movements by the assemblages involving becoming minority. However, it does not mean that the intellectuals must teach or lead the revolutionary masses in certain direction. Also, he actually the idea is quite different from Gramscian, you know, solution. Um, in intellectual and po power, actually, the, the interview, his interview with uh, Foucault, Deleuze further argued that, quote, a theorizing intellectual for us is no longer a subject, a representing or representative consciousness. Unquote. Deleuze did not regard intellectual as crucial in the revolutionary movements. Deleuze attempted to save the performative aspect revolution from its aftermath, Pella. Revolution is always becoming over history, and then becoming revolutionary is more important than being on the left. The condition of being on the left in Deleuze's sense are twofold. First is the planetary perception of a horizon based on the certain sense of its geographical address. Second is becoming minoritarian by nature, becoming aware of the fact that the minority is everyone and the majority is no one. 
to lose minor politic regards becoming, which is continuously escaped from the historical representation as a resistance against the general, generality of the signification and subdivision globally related to imperialism and colonialism. Through his philosophical intervention in official Marxism, Deleuze's question was always about how is it that people whose interests are not being served can strictly support existing power structure by demanding a piece of action, unquote. It's a Spinozian, you know, question, all right? Why actually, you know, do people struggle for their own subjugation, not for their freedom? According to him, the investment of desire molds and the distribution power. The nature of this desire investment clarifies why the po political institutions so again and again became reactionary in their layer of desire. After the, you know, revolution, why, you know, the, does history tell us all revolutionary institutions turn to be a, turn into, turn into a reactionary, you know, power. The problem of being on the left for Deleuze is gaining planetary thought and arranging process to become everyone. Deleuze on return Marx is already returned, but has not yet arrived. His eternal return to Marx anticipates the book to come in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alex, uh, for your fantastic lecture. It was uh, rich, uh, rigorous, yet thought-provoking. So I would like to open discussion right away. You can take the question. <laughs> All right, so you mentioned uh, Frankfurt School. Yeah. And I, actually, I was coming here to ask you about that. Mm -hmm. uh, I myself work with Deleuze and Guattari's schizoanalysis, and I've lately been trying to figure out whether and how it resonates with Adorno and Horkheimer's concept of the culture industry. Mm -hmm. uh, do you personally see any compatibility between Deleuze and Guattari and Frankfurt School? Very good question. Yeah, as for that uh, cultural industry, I think Deleuze, uh, you know, with Gattari shared even the same actual idea. That means uh, when uh, Deleuze mentioned uh, actually you know, the, con the society control, definitely in my opinion, actually that uh, you know imp imply the meaning of you know actually the critic uh, the cultural industry. In the in uh, you know dialectic of enlightenment, you can see that the chapter which I discussed the cultural industry. Um, I don't know, didn't actually, uh, you know, the mention the cybernetic, but definitely it's about cybernetic. You know, actually, the word Wiener uh, thought, you know, the cybernetic as kind of media, you know, communication, uh, communicative uh, tool, instrument. And then uh, actually the Adorno's uh, point that in technological, you know, actually, the, you know, the communication is not not really actually no, not merely a sort of a tool but uh, you know the existential enslavement something like that is that is cultural industry you know actually they enslave your desire and then uh, actually in my opinion the when the Deleuze you know the uh, said actually that the, I'm uh, you know still remain the Marxist then uh, quite in my opinion he uh, rediscovered you know Adorno's point of uh, cultural industry but I, you should know that actually the I heard this uh, story from uh, Jack Rangse. You know, Jack Rangse didn't know. Uh, you know, the some people uh, like uh, Frankfurt School exist. You know, until the you know 1967, he didn't know. You know, who who was who is uh, actually I don't know, because actually he's a teacher. You know, after the you know Second World War in France. Uh, I didn't allow you know the their student to read you know Frankfurt School because of for them uh, because they are a little bit orthodox in the Marxist and then the the Frankfurt School was regarded kind of heretic Marxist you know? <laughs> so when the Rangsi you know traveled to Brazil he saw that the whole actual translation of Adorno in you know the San Paulo he found out oh my gosh who is this guy you know actually he checked out he found you know that, that there is uh, some kind of uh, the people called the Frankfurt School, but the, he found in very similarity you know, between uh, actually the Frankfurt School and then the French Marxism. So I think uh, Deleuze also quite similar. He didn't, you know, the come across, you know, the Frankfurt School seriously, but uh, anyway, uh, you know, actually he 
But anyway, just the fundamental uh, uh, philosophical pounding is quite different from you know, the Adorno, because uh, Adorno is a little bit more like Hegelian, but uh, Deleuze uh, quite uh, intent, intent uh, how can I just, you know, the, he intend to uh, get, you know, the, actually the, out of the kind of Hegelian paradigm, that's why. But you can find many similarities in later Deleuze and then Adorno. Nick, yeah. thanks for your talk. Good to see you here. Good to see you too, in person. Um, thank you. I have maybe two quick questions. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry I missed the introduction, but I see that this is part of a yeah, bigger yeah. book. Um, uh, my, my first question is, uh, I, uh, Deleuze remains Marxist, mm -hmm. and yet the title is Unwritten Marx. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if whether for, you think for Deleuze or in your own book project, mm. uh, the distinction between Marx and Marxism mm. is important at all. You know, there's Marx's yeah, yeah, famous yeah. Mm. quip, uh, if there's anything I know, it's that I'm not a Marxist. Mm. So I don't know, is there any sense that that might be uh, an, an important distinction um, in what you're doing? And my second question, also because I see this as part of a bigger project, you don't mention capitalism and schizophrenia. And I, I recall there's there's a pretty direct yeah. um, uh, discussion of the yeah. theory of value and, yeah, yeah. And, and capitalism and the argument that Negri will take up, right, mm. that, that Marx's theory of value is now being mm. um, surpassed or transformed or something mm. like that. So I wonder if uh, elsewhere in your thinking, in this, I guess, in this book project, mm. um, what, what is your take on the critique of, of capitalism in, in, in that book in, mm. in anti Oedipus? Yeah, that's a very good question as well. So actually, uh, my uh, answer to first question. All right, so actually, they're also very enigmatic. Why actually the, did uh, Deleuze said, I'm remain, you know, I'm remain uh, Marxist. But uh, as I already discussed, uh, for Deleuze, you know, Marx is, uh, Marx, there is a distinction be between Marx and uh, Marxism, right? And then, uh, in my opinion, actually, you know, the, he wasn't actually involved, you know, Marxist movement after Second World War. Uh, you know, he uh, he uh, distanciated himself from uh, such a uh, the militant, you know, people. And then, uh, uh, in my opinion, actually, the, he didn't actually think, you know, the the French uh, Marx, the French uh, Communist Party would, uh, you know, give some sort of, uh, uh, how can I say, you know, the, uh, the revolutionary solution to, you know, what's happened in the after, you know, Second World War in terms of Marx, the capitalism. What I mean, <coughs> but, uh, that means he anticipate he would anticipate, you know, the actual failure of a uh, Communist Party. That's why he didn't embark, you know, that. You know, one. Another one is his health problem. He got the lung disease and he couldn't actually get involved in that kind of military movement. And then the, another, you know, second reason, I think he didn't, uh, you know, the, the, the participate in that kind of activity. But in my opinion, you know, uh, Toulouse, you know, the wanna talk about uh, primordial, you know, idea of Marx, not the Marxism. So as I already discussed it, in those days, in the you know after Second World War, the France political Marxist political economy was dominant, so called humanism, humanist Marxism, and even you know actually the Altice was criticized by uh, you know the key members of uh, French Communist Party. So I think to lose uh, you this one, and the, my uh, presupposition is that I also discussed in my uh, whole in the manuscript. Um, to lose, you know, relationship to uh, Althusser was more, uh, you know, important than we ex we know at the moment. He had a desperately, actually, you know, the appeal to, you know, the, the Althusser because he wanted to publish his uh, essay about structuralism in Humanité. What is Humanité? Humanité is a French, you know, the Communist Party's uh, the journal is an official journal about human humanities. So uh, he wanted to actually publish his journal, you know, 
um, the, you know, the edited by uh, Althusser. That is uh, my, uh, you know, evidence to support this actually supposition. So his relationship to Althusser was very close and then uh, also very important. That he developed, when he developed his early idea, difference repetition and then the, the logic of sense, very important. In my opinion, the logic of sense is very important to work. In my opinion, it's one of the uh, most important work if you understand uh, Deleuze. This actually is a core text, in my opinion. He actually developed, in, in, in the logical sense, he actually already mentioned the necessity of a revolution. Why actually revolution is necessary, you know? There is a book about the revolution. So that's why actually he wanted to, uh, you know, the, develop this idea about Marxism already. But uh, he found some kind of uh, impasse in Althusserianism. So when he got in some interview, uh, and then he actually uh, confessed, the Gattari saved me. But a lot of people have said, you know, Gattari ruined the Toulouse. I don't think so. Uh, Toulouse himself said, Gattari saved me. What does that mean? In my opinion, is in my uh, interpretation, uh, Gattari saved Toulouse from Althusserian impasse. Because Althusser and the Baliba never, you know, left, you know, French Communist Party. When they discussed, you know, the, the, the proletarian dictatorship, of course, you can see that, you know, they never left. They still remained the Leninist. But actually, the, you know, the Gattari is uh, against, you know, Leninism. He actually went to the, you know, Trotskyism, you know, first. And then he, they tried to actually, you know, the, reorganize the concept of democratic centralism. That is actually the you know, core of the Leninism, that the democratic centralism, okay? So, all right, it is actually the, in this way, the Toulouse tried to, uh, you know, the, get already, uh, he didn't actually the, involve this uh, Marxist movement. That means he not interested in Marxism, you know, the aftermath of Marx. He's not interested in that. But what he tried to say, according to his own philosophy, what's already uh, fully discussed in the different repetition and the logical sense, he were interested in the pretext of uh, Marx, Marx. Why actually the, did Marx, you know, uh, write, you know, the capital? And then, of course, that was the Communist Manifesto. So that's what I'm saying. So, and then uh, what is that? It's a German ideology. So it, that is uh, actually the, also the Althusser's track. Althusser actually went back to, you know, German ideology. He said that actually the communism is important, you know, rather than you know the political economy, something like that. The Luz followed this track, but he found some problem of Althusser, but he couldn't actually, you know, the he couldn't know how to get out of that, that one, but you know the, the May you know, 68, you know, took place. And the Gattari, you know, came to his place to meet him. And then that is the actual whole story, as far as I know. So this is the reason why. That's why I said, you know, to lose interest in the communism, not really actually Marxism, not really Orthodox Marxism, not really Soviet Union, nothing to do with that. There's his interest in what actually, what kind of actually, you know, the idea, you know, brought up to this Marx. That's what he's interested. He's not, he's not, he's not interested in writing autobiography of Marx something like that. He, what he's interested in, the, what actually brought up the Karl Marx, this subjectivity. That is what I said. And the second, actually, the question, as for the second question, my answer is that, uh, okay, so until you push it a little bit, a very, in my opinion, the uh, specific text, which could be con uh, located in the French context. Why? Also, is, uh, in my opinion, is critical of Althusser. Why? It's about, you know, it looked like, uh, actually, they criticize psychoanalysis. But it's not really actually, you know, they intend, you know, it's not really actually that they intend to criticize that psychoanalysis. But what? They criticize the Freud or Marxism. They try to uh, criticize the uh, link between the psychoanalysis and the militantism. There's a Gattarian idea. Gattari got that kind of question. You know, after the 1968, you know that actually the artist is sent in you know, a Miller, his student. <laughs> The most uh, uh, the the clever you know student to uh, Lacombe, all right? 
And then actually did you know kind of gesture you know to uh, combine this kind of uh, Marxism or some uh, revolutionary theory with the uh, psychoanalysis, but actually the Antipas is aims at criticizing, attacking you know, this uh, attempt to uh, bring together you know the militantism and then psychoanalysis, you know, and then uh, that's why just uh, I'm uh, my uh, interest in more uh, on the you know the Thousand Plateau, Thousand Plateau. What is this uh, strange book? In my opinion, this book is about the reconstruction of a revolutionary theory, Leninism, in my opinion, you know, it's like uh, you know actually Zizek's book about Lenin, is a revolution at the gate, just like that. So uh, they try to actually reformulate the democratic centralism in the book. It's thousand plot. That's uh, my my answer. So he okay, just he. Uh, they actually try to. It look like you know the analysis of analysis of capitalism, but it's not really actually the analysis. Of course, actually analysis is there, but they, they didn't stop there. But you know, wanna go further, and then what they're interested in? How can actually the finish capitalism? That is their question. How can we finish capitalism? Of course, actually what they you know have. In the book is definitely you must uh, you know change the uh, the reassemble your rearranging your desire. How could you do that? That is exactly the answer. They try to uh, give the answer to this problem. And then of course in history we have uh, that experience of uh, democratic centrism. Okay, but um, you know actually the, that's why actually they try to uh, start their actual argument from there. The democratic centrism, and then uh, they also raise some question about democracy, and then uh, you know freedom and the many actually the you know, concept there, and of course the value there, you know, definitely. But uh, and then uh, actually they, in my opinion, they bring together all you know the different theory, you know, in one and uh, the text, but uh, you know quite a very uh, rhizomatic you know disposition, and then uh, they actually the, what they wanted to do there is definitely, in my opinion, you know, how to how to actually finish capitalism, you know? And then, uh, of course, one of their answer is the capitalism already got that sort of a moment, schizophrenia, you know? So we must uh, finish and, you know, that uh, sort of uh, oneness or some kind of representation or whatever called, you know, this actually the, um, the greed, you know, you can change it, all right? And then, uh, but, you know, not many people imagine it is possible, but they want to actually say it. that is already at a possibility. You know, but actually, okay, just uh, if I say, uh, allow me to actually my courage, I would say, you know, to lose a cell like this, you know, everybody knows, you know, why is the problem at the moment, climate change, and the many actual things happening, you know, inequality. And lots of you know the homeless, and then uh, you know the people uh, committing suicide because of poverty. Many other things we know that, and uh, we already know the solution. But the truth is question: Why we do not stop this one, this problem? That's what he said. That's the point of his philosophy. Why to you know don't we actually want to stop? Because we already no, no we already have know actually how to solve it, but we cannot do that. We don't do that. That's actually what the to try say. <laughs> I hope this is what this actually good for your question. My question. Uh, I wonder what's your take on uh, Zizek's criticism of Deleuze's mm -hmm. book uh, Organs Without Bodies. Yeah. That uh, uh, late capitalism became Zilesian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Chizek is my close friend, so <laughs> I want to defend him. <laughs> because of that book, uh, he was uh, blamed by so called delusion. But uh, uh, if you read that book, uh, you know, the in practice, Chizek, uh, you know, uh, put forward quite clearly what. Uh, I, I want to, you know, the find, you know, real Toulouse, real Toulouse, not, you know, such a Toulouse, which was used by digital capitalism. 
he put down that you know sentence on that you know the preface. So uh, in my opinion, actually capitalism could use the rules. Even in Korea, actually, there are some uh, you know the advertisement, you know, commercial advertisement used you know the rules too. <laughs> and then even they use that you know the Foucault and then you know seriously, with, uh, you know the commercial actually the advertisement used the Foucault and then Hegel, you know, even you know they use the Marx, you know. For their, even, yeah, you know, they actually do the Che Guevara, you know, t-shirts, you know, lots of the commodity, you know, and then uh, Castro, you know, the cigar, something like that, you can find it. But it doesn't mean actually, it doesn't mean actually, you know, the, the Castro and the Che Guevara and the Marx is not uh, revolutionary. You know? That's what I'm saying. Even actually the Sartre, you know, Jean-Paul Sartre, he's a Marxist, you know, French Marxist, all right? Existential Marxist. But he used in Korea to actually justify anti-communism because he criticized Stalin. <laughs> but uh, nobody would say that actually you know, the Sartre is a reactionary because of this. They can use it, but uh, not really actually, you know, uh, it doesn't mean actually that uh, philosophy is uh, useless or not revolutionary. So something like that. So I think uh, in my opinion, Zizek's critique of you know that uh, Deleuze is not really actually the Deleuzean philosophy, but uh, you know the, actually the use of Deleuze. <clears throat> but <clears throat> I, I might follow up on that because uh, I'm, I'm not a philosopher, first of all. Mm. Uh, but uh, I'm, a, I'm an anthropologist, and I did research among the Bitcoin community and cryptocurrency communities. Uh, and uh, when I read here that uh, communism is the pro uh, not the problem of communication and the key thing is to create these sort of vacuums of non-communication circuit breakers so we can elude control. So this sort of idea of opting out, opting out from the systems of control, uh, uh, it resonates uh, for me with, uh, with the Newman and his uh, indifference to power and these sort of post-anarchist uh, mm. and individualist anarchist movements, which I think were actually heavily uh, influenced by, by Deleuze. Uh, it, it sort of begs the question, since this is sort of the core of, of his idea of, uh, of communism or of sort of new, the, of the future, uh, how how it uh, because this is this is also the core of the of the current capitalism of informational capitalism of the capitalism that uh, eludes control of capital that sort of uh, breaks free from uh, from all these uh, circuit breakers you know it, it sort of uh, it sort of uh, goes uh, either into these uh, offshore spaces or even sort of returns back to the body so so within within the uh, crypto uh, anarchist uh, community, this sort of idea of uh, hiding capital inside of the body itself is quite uh, common. So, so how can we, you know, so this is not just that they would use the list because they don't know the list, but they, they came to very similar conclusions as he did, but use them uh, and, and they are conclusions of capital breaking free. So, so mm. can we? Very important uh, question. But when I, when I, I studied in the University of Warwick, you know, Nick Land was there, <laughs> and Mark Fisher is there. And then, yeah, when I got there, the, the university, uh, you know, all those uh, post, uh, postgraduate students uh, are quite, uh, you know, the, inclined to such an interpretation of Deleuze. And then now the, we call that trend as uh, accelerationism. Accelerationism. But, uh, uh, but actually, if you read the Antidipus, you know, Deleuze actually, the Deleuze and Gattari quite you know, clearly opposed to that concept. Of course, actually, uh, capitalism could, you know, the uh, self cancel itself. But, you know, the, if you can find, you know, the, the counter argument against this in the Thousand Plateau, why is that? It's Urstadt. This is actually the concept also the, given by uh, actually the Antidipus. This concept is very important. In my opinion, the Deleuze Gattari's uh, political philosophy would be about the state. They, he, they are interested in the how we can cancel the state. How can we abolish, you know, state? That was actually their communism. Communism means, you know, the end of state, end of nation state, end of uh, Thomas Hobbes, end of. It's not the escape from state, okay? It's end of withering away of state. That is what is already discussed. You know, the, the Marx and Engels in the German ideology. 
actually the actually the concrete actual you know the movement against you know existing regime that is communism that what they actually defined definitely this is actualization you know existing regime what is existing regime this oneness capitalism oneness is there but this actually you know capitalism always already contained this sort of what concrete movement within it to abolish itself it's not actually the automatically cancelled it's not automatically collapsed is by this concrete movement, okay? What is this movement from? Subjectivity. Or some kind of revolutionary, you know? Desire or something like that, right? So uh, uh, I, I don't actually quite agree with that kind of observation. It's the idea of, uh, you know, Deleuze. And then Deleuze is not like, you know, such an accelerationist, uh, you know? As far as I know. I think that you sort of... Uh Made that, made that connection in the lecture today when you were talking about Althusser and you mentioned how he explained how a theoretical method could bring up the true critique of the false belief and I think that's kind of what Deleuze and Guattari are saying with the in anti oedipus with autocritic mm -hmm. with schizoanalysis as an autocritic of capitalism I yeah, think yeah, that yeah. everything that we are now discussing and even some some sort of neoliberal um, exploitation of Deleuze's ideas is because they aim for this autocritique. Because capitalism can, with the right optics, already be seen performing that autocritique. Wouldn't that be the... Yeah, actually, question? that is what I say, you know, the Deleuze Gattari quite emphasized that the capitalism has its own self-canceling power within it. That is a schizophrenic, you know, actually the moment, you know, within the, you know, capitalism. What is this schizophrenic moment in capitalism? Of course, yes. For instance, in Korean drama, Squid Game, you know, it criticizes capitalism, <laughs> right? Not actually really Marxist way, but in a utilitarian way. That is also the Bolivar, you know, pointed out, you know, Bolivar also pointed out, you know, that is, uh, you know, the the paradox of, uh, you know, the equality and the freedom, you know, combination, you know, equality, something like that. You know, actually, that is a problem. And then I think Baliba is quite strongly influenced by Deleuze, I think. It is. And then Jacques Rangsi and all, you know, students, you know, uh, very strongly influenced, but uh, only Baliba, he's a good student, and only Baliba actually uh, admit, you know, <laughs> his influence from uh, the Deleuze influence to his uh, thought, but anyway, so, but uh, you know, Deleuze Gattari uh, didn't stop there, you know, didn't stop that analysis, and then that was their point when they criticized the psychoanalysis. Psychoanalysis simply stopped analyzing. Of course, actually later, you know, Lacan is quite different because Lacan was also influenced by Antidupus. That's why you know, he changed his attitude, you know. In later stance, something like that. But anyway, just uh, you know, actually, that was the their point. You no, know, actually, in the that was the point, the lose point when he criticized, you know, the critical philosophy cannot, you know, the give us some sort of you know revolutionary moment, something like that. You know, it's a theoretical problem there. You know, so that kind of uh, you know dialectic cannot give us some sort of uh, you know the uh, solution to this you know the status quo. That's why they said it's a subject object that relation is like a liberal democracy, you know? It does not actually give us any, you know, the exit from this, you know, the regime. That's why they say. So they don't stop there. What they want is uh, how can we get over, you know, not actually Hegelian sense, not the sublation. How can we get over this, you know, actually you know, the dichotomy, you know? That is what I'm saying. So what was that? That is what they argue in terms of uh, primitive accumulation. So actually in uh, Thousand Plateau, you know, uh, Deleuze and Gattori suggest that, uh, not only actually Thousand Plateau, but Antidupus as well, the, the, the section uh, where they discussed the Oshtat, they actually, how Oshtat can they sustain, they, they argue that primitive accumulation return, you know? That is actually meaning of you know capitalist schizophrenia, 
capitalist actually schizophrenia. Now at the moment austerity and then you know actually you can see that inflation. Many actually you know the actually the, the economists you know said you know actually the capitalism now in crisis. But this crisis means according to Lucian Gattari, return of primitive accumulation. All this primitive accumulation return. And this is actually meaning of capitalist schizophrenia. But uh, what they want is uh, we must uh, stop this one. You must uh, stop. And then uh, creating a what? Empty square. Void. That's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, well, just a look, quick follow up question. How would this uh, fit also together with, uh, for example, feminist uh, Marxism, which mm. claims that uh, primitive accumulation actually never stop? Mm. So, so, you know, that it's some continuous process where. Uh, the reproductive labor gets accumulated uh, mm. on a daily basis, and mm. uh, so so. Yeah. Could this be somehow reconciled with this? Yeah, idea that is of a, the return. Yeah, that is a capitalist logic. For instance, you know, at the moment, actually, the, uh, we have uh, actually the new age of technology, artificial intelligence. I don't, I don't think uh, this is a new term. You know, new actual paradigm. In my opinion, it's a kind of return of a 1940s cybernetic theory. Came came back. The same is is the same feedback and then you know the the input and the feedback and the correction and this is actually quite a you know, typical you know theory of cybernetic. It came back in different name, artificial intelligence, more like a humanistic you know <laughs> sense, you know, and it look like a human and then uh, oh my gosh, you have to Siri, you know, answer to me and then now the you know the GPT technology, chat GPT actually you know uh, try to. Uh, People actually try to actually you know, to bring in this you know the new technology into their own you know the uh, the workplace something like that and then um, they actually anticipate okay just uh, university education and blah blah but uh, you know the technology does not want you know end the university you should put you know your question on the you know the chat GPT could you actually end the university education and you would actually answer that I did that and he. It answered me. I'm not simply actual corpus of language, you know, human language. So I don't actually intend to end the, the, the university education. <laughs> that is meaning of algorithm. Algorithm does not have answer no. Algorithm always say yes. All right. This is algorithm. This is actually according to Deleuze. You know what is that? It's a definitely the existing logic of the regime. Yes, representation. You know, actually, always, uh, actually, algorithm did not say any negative answer because it was designed like that. You know, when actually the algorithm, for instance, you know, we got the refrigerator in your home, all right? If you refrigerator out of, out of order, what, what will you do? Try to fix it or throw away, you know? That is actually the meaning of uh, the instrumental machine. You actually, the, if you refrigerate out of order, you fix it or throw it away. That is actually the you know, traditional sense of technology. Okay, Heideggerian sense, why is that? You must understand refrigerator is melancholy. Okay, you are, you know, refrigerator turn, turn into melancholy. That's why you must understand melancholy. <laughs> Machine melancholy, something like that. And then actually, the, what is Deleuze and Qatar's one? Okay, just uh, this actually, you know, the, the refrigerator out of order. You can use it for... Uh, bookshelves or something, a table, something like that. That is a minor use of technology in delusion sense. That thing has already happened outside of this civilized world. <laughs> For instance, actually, the, lots of uh, such uh, movies, you know, you can see that, you know, so-called tribes in the so-called tribes. They didn't call themselves tribes, but we call them a tribes. You are a civilized person and then we call them a tribe, primitive. Something like that, but they use that kind of, you know, some item or trash, rubbish, something, but use it different way, okay? And then some uh, documentary would introduce that one, you know, for instance, Papua New Guinea, you know, some uh, tribe, you know, they made their own, you know, airplane, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that is exactly what I'm saying. Already that, you know, different use of technology happening at the moment, but uh, what I'm saying is, uh, Oh, okay, the machine and then uh, technology always there. We come along with our life.
But uh, you know, always this actual technology, that means actually the operator of the technology or a governor or a politician, what are they doing now? They actually force us, even capitalists, you know, entrepreneurial capitalists, they actually force us to learn how to use technology. They actually impose us to learn. I think uh, to some point there might be a 21st Lenin, you know, <laughs> they are Leninists. They actually uh, force us to learn something about new technology, but of course it's not a new technology, but uh, they try to, you know, persuade us, you must educate yourself permanently. I think this is a problem at the moment, you know. This is a sort of a technique of enslavement. And then, uh, that's what I'm saying. Actually, of course, it is, we need actually another way to reconstruct the enlightenment, all right? And then, uh, you know, actually, Foucault and then Deleuze are also similar. Knowledge is effect of this actualization. Not the knowledge as such is actualization, but uh, Many people still are, uh, you know, confused with this one. The, I think the Deleuze politic is quite simple. Actualization produces this knowledge, not, you know, the trapped by knowledge of uh, evolution. That's what I'm saying. You know. So now at the moment we are enslaved by technology, but it's not a problem of technology, in my opinion. It's a problem of this capitalist, you know, actually the regime. So. It doesn't mean actually rejecting science. It doesn't mean rejecting enlightenment. It doesn't mean, you know, reject to use, not like Heidegger. We must actually get over, you know, this Heideggerian dilemma. Heidegger actually went to the, you know, the other way. I don't agree with Heidegger. You know. Heidegger is actually, pollution is wrong. You can see that Nazi and Hitler, you know, it's not accident. It's, it's, it, it wasn't accident, you know, he actually supported Hitler, in my opinion. If you actually reject this kind of uh, enlightenment paradigm, you don't have any choice except that passism. Yeah. Okay, unless uh, there is some more question, I would like to thank you thank once you. again for your excellent Thank you, fantastic question and the discussion. Us. Thank you very much. Good night.